This is the men's training center, also known as Miracle Mountain. It is the first phase of the program called East County Transitional Living Center. The faith-based program houses hundreds of people, but the single men, also known as disciples, comes to the ranch for the first 90 days of the program. Here, they are cut off from the world and technology to focus on themselves. Now, hello, my name is Josh. Um, I am the ranch overseer here at the ECTLC Men's Training Center. What we have here is uh, people, whether they're, they're coming from jail or prison or uh, homelessness or um, some people that uh, have lost everything due to an addiction. Um, we, have, we have, everyone has a different story. There are nine dorms, which can house up to a total of 80 men. Each dorm is named after several books out of the Bible. The first dorm, called Genesis, is where the new disciples enter. Here, they will stay for a week or two, until the overseer feels they can move on. Then they will permanently move into another dorm and assigned a job. Welcome to Genesis. It's a holy place. It's beautiful. Very holy. Just not with these guys. Now you can use a boat uh, once I finish these noodles. A part of it. I'm hungry now, bro. After you found out that we're not going to eat lunch. Wait, Kyle, we don't have lunch? I don't know. Although there has been renovations throughout its time, Genesis was made to feel run down, so the disciples would have to earn their way to the nicer dorms. The men's training center is equipped with a fully staffed kitchen. The kitchen staff is responsible for cooking three square meals a day for all the men in the camp. Most of the food is donated by big companies such as Amazon Fresh, Costco and Vons. Disciples who haven't been assigned a job are required to attend classes throughout the day. Although everyone in the camp is required to attend the 6 o'clock evening class. Ranch overseer, Josh Bender, explains. Uh, our first class is Proverbs at 6 o'clock. Uh, there they could bring their coffee in, they bring their Bible. And um, Proverbs, I personally love it. It's it sets the mood for the day. It gets you, gets you where you need to be uh, spiritually, and it, yeah, it, it wakes you up along with the coffee. Coffee definitely helps. Uh, we'll do a class at 10 o'clock sometimes. It depends if we have speakers here. The, the schedule can vary. 
Um, sometimes we'll have uh, Pastor Miles here or Pastor Thomas will do a class at 10. And I was, I was back all day, every day. That's all I did. It's like my whole goal, my whole purpose was to have some dope in my pocket so I can put it on the pipe whenever I want to. And that's what I spent my life doing for 15 years. After you came to faith, did you ever relapse? No. No, no I'm a new creation in Christ. And coming to faith, that's, I, 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 I don't really use that term. Faith, faith is something God has to give you. When God comes back for judgment, who lives? Only those that are in Christ. Not those that say they believe in Christ. Not those that know about Christ. But those that are in Christ. That's one of the, one of the phrases you're going to find in your Bibles. We also do a class um, around one, um, and then we we do classes. Uh, we try to do them every hour. We have we have an hour dedicated to homework. So uh, our homework assignments uh, usually they start in Matthew, and they do two chapters a week, and they uh, will read Matthew one starting, and then they will do a summary on the chapter. And then uh, they'll do 10 lines written down. And then they'll, then they'll write down 10 lines for an application, how they can apply it to their lives. And uh, we'll have a, a guest speaker at 6 o'clock. And that changes every night. We'll have a new speaker. And uh, again, we'll have a, a class from 6 to 7. And a lot of people have. Now, another key ring that very important with these also, but they go to certain places that only a couple of us have keys. one key. <laughs> As stated by the ranch overseer, a different guest speaker usually comes every night at the six o'clock class. On Friday nights, they usually have a singer come and lead worship songs. Disciples who are not assigned a job or are not working the next day have to perform an important duty called fire watch. Every night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., a disciple is out watching over the camp. The eight-hour span is broken down into four shifts. Their job is to make sure no one is out and about during the night. Since it is located near the Mexican border, they also make sure there are no illegals breaking into the camp. And of course, as the job title says, they make sure there are no fires in the wooded area. Chasing them into their trap, right? No, 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 Oh my God, I've never seen that. It's... A little smaller than it has been. Yeah, but, uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's the groundwater coming out now. There's a little creek that comes in from the back down there. Oh, this is the, that's running right now, huh? Because that's the season. Just kind of. I can see kind of water down there, maybe. Yeah, huh? you're seeing the reflection of the moon in it. Yeah, I saw that. And the frogs get going, man. Yeah, you, you ever wonder where the frogs come from? 
I know it. It's weird. Like snails. They just show up when it rains. There's like all these snails in my house. And then and then they're like they're no Every few months, the camp puts on a barbecue event, inviting the families of the disciples to spend an afternoon together. Thomas Dickinson, who runs the men's training center, can be seen here opening the event. It's really important uh, for them to know that they have support out there and that there, that there is still hope. And we're so glad that you all could come. We'd like to welcome you. Uh, uh, let's open up in prayer. Father God. Like all of the program members, Thomas was once a disciple himself and came through the program years ago. East County Transitional Living Center tends to hire people who went through the program themselves so that the staff knows exactly what the program members are going through. Not only does Thomas run the day-to-day -day operations of the camp, he also gives tours to important members of the community, including board members, sitter leaders, and potential donors. Up a little bit, start opening up, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful place. We've been blessed because when I was here, and uh, up until about three years ago, uh, that up there, when I was here, I was laying in bed, and the rats would fall on you when you're laying in bed, because there were so many. They try to walk. Um, it is not unusual for a disciple to give his testimony to the camp. Although it was there in front of them, you know, the miracles, the beauty, the pure holiness of this man, they still couldn't grasp it. Um, and that, that fathomed me, because, you know, I'm actually a huge person about I gotta see it to believe it, and you know, it just it just hurts me how hard the hearts are, and, and, and I'm I'm that, I'm that exact person. I've been that person all my life. The camp even has its own interview room, where the disciples voluntarily give their testimony on camera, which is then later posted to YouTube. I left my foster family when I was 19. They pretty much kicked me out. Um, it was very rough. I I, I went through a lot of. Uh, uh, Christmases without gifts, um, they would give me gifts and then they would take them back. I'd, I'd watch them open them up. Um, I got beaten a lot. I was uh, kidnapped at age four. Um, and I, you know, I got into drugs. I had actually my first child when I was 18, my son, and was still a child myself. I got to a point in my life after serving 30 years in prison, 30 years of my 58 years I've been in prison. 20 in the state under two different numbers and 10 in the feds. Um, I had my uncle, which he was like my brother, and uh, he passed away sadly. Uh, but yeah, after that, when my the dad men got, giving the interviews out, are just coming into the program. Like Since they are coming so from a bad situation, to, um, they usually have a lot to talk about. They let their guard down. They say talking to the camera actually helps them therapeutically. God has seen fit to use me. And I just hope that, that I'm a worthy vessel. And thank you for listening, guys.